Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The meaning of halal and tayyib. In the Holy Quran, Allah says in Surah Baqarah, "O oh mankind, eat of what is halal and tayyib." What He's telling us is to eat of what is both permissible and pure, or wholesome, or organic, unadulterated. And I think that's beautiful. So the origins of halal are based in the Holy Quran. We are given that commandment to eat of what is halal. And that's why we are here today, because this has historically been something that we um, accept and we believe in. And now we need to really understand what that means in today's terms, because the food industry has gotten a lot more complicated um, and that makes it a little bit challenging for us sometimes to really understand what is halal and what isn't, but we can sort that out and that's what I'm going to try to do in this presentation. So um, halal means permissible or allowed, right? And it's not just for food. It is for things like fashion, for finance, for social interactions, and when it comes to food, um, you know, there's actually more that is halal that, than isn't. Um, and how do we translate that to everyday life? Well, we're looking at, you know, things with labels of halal certification, or we're talking to our butchers to understand how the meat was ritually slaughtered, and, and so on and so forth. So in our everyday practice of halal, we, you know, as consumers, try to educate ourselves enough to understand the basics. But I want to get into some, you know, more, not so complicated, but just a little bit of the deeper meanings of halal and also really focus on, on the halal and tayyib. So what's in the food we eat? This is really important and I think it actually goes beyond halal, but in terms of what is halal um, for this presentation, I think that we need to understand a few things. Byproducts, for example. What is a byproduct? Well, for example, when um, an animal is ritually slaughtered or, or slaughtered in general in any, in any slaughterhouse, <clears throat> whether it's a pig or a sheep or a, a cow, that entire animal is used. And I'm talking from intestines to their, their coat to their feathers, <clears throat> everything goes somewhere. And that's just the efficiency and frugality of the industry. And that's how, um, you know, people who run these businesses, uh, you know, make their income. And also not to waste, you know, part of, of these animals. So, and that's a good thing that the animals are not wasted in any way. However, from a halal perspective, um, I think we're always mostly worried about where the pig ends up. And that's a complicated a uh, um, thing to talk about because it kind of ends up in a lot of places and that's where most of us are really kind of looking out for is does something have a derivative of, of pork in it and you know it doesn't just end up in our food it ends up in a lot of places and you know things like tobacco or chewing gum or uh, even firearms um, you know the pig is used for a lot of different things leather, for example. So, you know, that's, that's basically what a byproduct is. So we're looking at um, food labels to see if there are derivatives of pork in them. And that can be a little challenging because sometimes we don't always, it doesn't say, it's not going to say this ingredient is derived from pig. But what happens is that um, from like a food science or food industry perspective, we're sort of looking at um, certain names of ingredients like monodiglycerides or gelatin or things like that. That's what most consumers who are well-versed in halal will, will, will look for, but it can end up in a lot of different ways. So I'm not going to get into those exact specifics right now, but I just want to um, touch on the fact that the food we eat is not just very, not so simple anymore. So it does have a lot of those byproducts. Now, when it comes to feed cycle ingredients, I mean, what, what does that mean? Now, this is a little bit more of an agricultural term, but it's important for a consumer to know because it means that every animal that you eat has had to eat. 
And I like the term or, or the phrase that I heard once that says, you are what you eat eats. And that is so true because whatever an animal is eating ends up in us if we've eaten it. So that's why it's really important from a halal perspective to kind of know who you're buying from and to understand that they've taken great care to know, to tell you or to clarify or to clear that the food psych, the food ingredients that the animal is eating is, is also halal. And what does that mean? So every animal has a different diet. But what we're looking for is what is biologically appropriate for those animals. If, an, if a diet is making an animal sick or it's just it's toxic to them, that's not going to be halal. It's not healthy for the animal. It's not fair to the animal. It's, it's cruel. It has a lot of implications there. So what we want to really understand is that you are what you eat eats. So it's important to not just focus on the ritual slaughter, but also look at how the animal was treated and, and, and that goes um, as well into like what, what it's been eating. Now, when it comes to chemicals and preservatives, synthetics and artificial flavors, I really think this is not just about meat. This is about anything that we're eating, you know, produce-wise, snacks, cereals. You know, if things have a toxic cocktail on them, why are we putting them in our bodies? That's not going to be biome. It's not pure. It's not wholesome. So what are we doing here as consumers? We, we might look at it and say, oh, there are no questionably halal ingredients but what about the what about the chemicals what about the preservatives that um, aren't good for us you know are they making us sick i think that's a very important aspect of, of being a halal consumer is to to say our body is an amana on us it's a trust and so what we have to see here is that anything that's harming us shouldn't be put into our bodies gmos is a is a very questionable thing i mean there's a lot of science to back up the fact that they are harmful, but there's a lot of controversy around that science. And so I leave it to you, the consumer, to do your homework on whether or not you want to feed your family GMOs. I personally uh, try to avoid them because I just feel like there isn't enough evidence to convince me that they are wholly safe. But it is incumbent, I think, upon everybody to kind of question that for themselves. So halal in tayyab, what's the meaning? There's a practical and a spiritual answer to this. So what is halal, permissible, and what is tayyab, pure? Uh, pure? <clears throat> it's practical in the sense that we are looking at those animals that we can eat. The spiritual side of it is really interesting. I have witnessed a lot of ritual slaughter, both on farms and in slaughterhouses. And what I find is that a healthy animal, one that is happy, eating right, uh, grazing or frolicking on the farm, I mean, that's, that's the utopia, right? That's what we're all kind of looking for, is to say that that animal had a good life, it was treated well. And that's an Islamic imperative, that animal welfare is huge. Uh, in Islam, we are not to, whether we're going to eat the animal or not, it should not be mistreated, it should not be um, abused in any way, it shouldn't be treated just as meat, it should be treated as a live creature. Those animals are a trust on its owners, and, um, and therefore the slaughter as the end game doesn't justify poor treatment. In fact, it amplifies better treatment. But regardless, animal welfare is a hugely, I think, ignored topic in, in our community. And I would like to open that up more because I feel like, again, you are not just what you eat eats, but you're also what you eat has lived. Um, <clears throat> I, I have listened to lots of other, <coughs> excuse me, I have listened to a lot of other, um, uh, talks about trauma that animals face and how if we're not paying attention to the way an animal is brought to the table you know we we so, we sometimes inherit what that animal has faced at the end of its life so if things are done in a ritually Islamic way 
done right, we shouldn't have to worry about that spiritual side of the way we're eating. And I think what I, what I mean is this, and I'm going to get into some specifics now. When an animal is ritually uh, prepared for slaughter, there are certain things that need to be done. One is that the animal should be separated from the animal that's you know set to be to be slaughtered should be separated from the rest of the herd so that the rest of the herd doesn't see the action taking place and that is so that the other animals don't don't witness it don't get fearful and it's much harder um in a in a larger manufacturing process but i have seen it done properly um in a farm, it's a little easier because they can just take an animal out to pasture and, and kind of, you know, take care of it there. But that's not where it ends. I have seen, and it's a it's a very beautiful thing, when the person doing the slaughter takes t- time with the animal. They pet it. They give it some water. They maybe talk to it a little bit, say a little prayer. And it really calms the animal down. And what that does is that it Scientifically, it reduces its cortisol, it reduces its adrenaline, which if that adrenaline or cortisol is high, it can be toxic to us. So there's really some hikma or wisdom behind that. That's very beautiful. Um, at the time of slaughter, the person doing it, you know, must say the, say, uh, um, you know, that, that sacrifice is done in the name of God and nothing else. But it also also should be done very swiftly and with uh, a tool that allows it to be done just once and not multiple times or not, you know, struggling to, to do it. It should be very, very, very quick. We don't want the animal to suffer unduly. Um, and when you witness that, you really see the true sacrifice that the animal has made to give us the nourishment and food that it is giving. When it happens, whatever animal it is, the blood needs to be drained out, except for fish. That's different. Fish are not ritually slaughtered. Um, But the blood being let out is a very important aspect for us as the ones eating, the eventually eating that that animal, um, because blood is not hygienic, it's, it carries a lot of germs. And so if it's let out, then we're not eating any of that. So that's a really important aspect of, of the ritual slaughter. And sometimes those details can be kind of unnerving for people to, to hear. But if we really wanna understand where our food comes from, and you really want to grasp the spirituality of it, I think it's important to understand how it happens. I think after I witnessed this many times, I actually started eating less meat, not because I felt that it was, um, you know, uh, gruesome, but because I felt the importance of, of this sacrifice and I don't want to waste it. When I eat, I just try to take the meat that the amount that I will eat and know that I'll finish and because the implications and the, the, the sacrifice is so great that when it's done so properly, you don't, you don't feel the need to take more than what is necessary. So it's a really interesting um, process and it does have that spiritual feeling once you really understand how it's supposed to be done and when it done, it's done right. Um, I touched on animal welfare a little bit, but let's talk about worker welfare. Um, Most people don't think about the people who are involved in processing animals, but they also need to be treated properly and treated right. I mean, hello, um, in Tayyib, they are under the umbrella of Islam, and Islam is a holistic religion. And so we're looking at all the aspects of things being done right. And that's why it's important, I mean, in the food world, there's, there's a lot of talk about food justice and injustice and things like that. And it's important because these are the people who are bringing food to our table and they should be treated right. They should be paid properly. They should be, um, you know, happy. Uh, That's in any workplace, but particularly when it comes to our food, um, they do a great service. And and I think if you've ever witnessed any kind of food processing,